What is poppin' fam? Good morning, happy Thursday. I am officially 37 days out from my competition on October 5th. No, this is not real cheese, I'll explain in just one second. But I do want to uh, make this, this video a little bit different. It's not gonna be a full vlog. It's gonna be a pre-workout meal, and then it's gonna be my actual workout with a voiceover, and then it's gonna be a post-workout meal kind of explaining different things that you could be eating. So I wanna make sure that you know uh, the best ways to consume food, especially if you're low calorie, if you're uh, com competing, if just you want, you're like dieting, you're trying to lose fat, whatever it is, I wanna give you my ideas and some tricks and, and trades that you can incorporate into your own diet so that you can get the, the most out of your workouts and everything, uh, but also stay within the calorie ranges. So today what I'm eating is these things called thin crackers. So they're red rice and quinoa. And with just one actual thin, it is 23, so it's about, six grams or even five grams of carbs. Uh, five grams of carbs and even less. So about five grams to six grams of carbs depending on what type of thin stackers you get. They're from Lund, what is it? Lundberg Family Farms. Yeah, Lundberg Family Farms, you can check them out. I, I always, always eat these just because it's really, really, it's really easy. It's small and if I'm having like a little egg sandwich or whatever, I can put it on top and I have no problems. Now I'm also having the vegan cheese. Now the great thing about vegan cheese, a little bit different than regular cheese is, regular cheese, if you have any dairy uh, sensitivities or anything that has to do with dairy, obviously it's gonna be a lot better for your digestion or, or it should be, right, quote unquote. But with this cheese, instead of it being seven or eight grams or six grams of fat and six and seven grams of protein, it's actually four grams of fat and four grams of carbs, which is really, really cool. And I love that just because I don't have to have a lot of my protein and as much fat if I have a slice of cheese. I also split it in half and it's freaking delicious. So I, th I believe it's Visa Life that I get my cheese from. Um, Vio Life, 100% vegan cheddar cheese. I highly, highly suggest that you that you pick that up. Now, eggs. I generally stay away from eating the yolk just because I'm such low fat. Now, my, my obviously, I'm not saying that you need to go low fat, but for me, I'm 50 fats right now, 50 grams of fat every single day. So I really, really gotta be, I gotta choose correctly what I wanna eat and I gotta make sure that uh, I'm in the right place. Now, couple of suggestions if you don't wanna eat this specific meal. First, let me throw this on top so we're, so we're good to go. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let me show you what I have in here. If you come in here. Here's another great option. Uh, this is called Le Pain des Flaus, the bread of flowers. This is 70 calories for four crisps, and that is 0.5 grams of fat, 13 grams of carbs, and really I want, to, I want you to pay attention to the, to the carbs on this one, and then the protein is two grams. So four crisps, they are kind of, uh, they're very, very interesting. They're not like, like really thick or anything like that, but they get the job done. So if you only wanna get a little bit of carbs, right, because you do wanna get some carbs in before your training, something that's, that you can digest a little bit quicker. Uh, technically, it's hard to say because you want carbs throughout your entire workout. So if it does take a little bit of time to digest, that's actually better. So a little starchier of a carb will be better for you because uh, let's say you're working out for an hour and a half, you want to be able to utilize those carbs as well throughout even halfway through your training to the third half, the, the, the third quarter of your training. It is gonna be important. So I like to have something that is a little bit more starchy, buckwheat flour, you can have something with, um, I mean there's, there's so many different, just, just rice, quinoa, things like that, uh, but definitely check these out. Now, I don't really eat that. I have a cereal in here. I don't generally eat that cereal. I, obviously, you have brown rice, cakes. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah. I have these right up here. Let's try to find them. Outside the box, graham crackers. Now, the ingredients are brown rice flour, honey, tapioca starch, butter, whole egg, baking powder, sea salt, uh, baking soda and cream of tartar. So they're not too bad. 
Smaller amount of ingredients. You know exactly what's in here. It's called outside the box. Outside the box. These are gluten-free, wheat-free, nut-free, and soy-free. So this is a great addition that you could eat as well. And one of them is just 14 grams of carbs and four grams of fats. So you're getting a good amount of calories in in something small like that. Um, I also, the cassava flour, siete tortillas. Sorry, um, 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 um. These have 130 calories for two of them. Three grams of fat, 24 grams of carbs, and one gram of protein. So you could definitely utilize this. Now, whenever you're gonna eat any type of protein, in here I have what, what is called ground yak. Ground yak is a little bit different. It's, it's not too low in fat, but it has just a good amount of fat where you feel, uh, you feel balanced. You just feel really, really balanced. Good macros on this meat. And the reason why I like eating ground yak, and I don't eat ground beef, I don't really, I try and stay away from chicken uh, and, and, many other, and many other regular meats is because one, how it's processed, where are they coming from, where's the sourcing, all that stuff, what is truly organic, certified organic, what does that actually mean? So I try and eat wild meats and then uh, obviously that'll, that'll help with my digestion because of the hormones and the preservatives and all the stuff that, that they say that's not really in there or could be in there, I don't want it. So I go with wild meats. Also, the protein to, to fat content is just incredible with this, with this meat. So I'll have just a little bit and it's really filling and it's a little bit tender, but at the same time, it's not. It's like, it's, it's a happy medium that I really, really enjoy. So ground yak, Y-A-K, you can look it up online. It's a little bit more expensive of a meat, but I do highly suggest you look at it. If you can't afford it, then I do use, obviously, Icon meals. I, I eat Icon meals every single day. A roasted turkey breast. Roasted turkey or just turkey breast in general is a cleaner meat than chicken. I do highly suggest that you consume that. Now, you can also have some vegetables, and that's always really big, but you want something a little bit more dense in calories. So, carrots, one of those things that will definitely provide for you. Um, has a lot of incredible micronutrients, and yeah, I, 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 We'll suggest this one for sure. So that's pretty much it for pre-workout. I'll be talking about more post-workout here after the training, but uh, yeah. Also, if you have not picked up your greens and your creatine HCL, we are smashing it out of the park. We're actually hosting a big event in, in Las Vegas, but the greens and the creatine, I take one scoop every single morning, that's it. It literally, look at it. It's literally just one little scoop. That's it, every single day and it's servings on servings and servings of vegetables. So yeah, anyways, I'm gonna finish this, this food up, eat this real quick, we're gonna get this workout in, we're hitting back. I wanna really, really hit this shit hard. We're gonna do some pull-ups and, and just get after it. My hamstring, just a little update, it's actually not my hamstring, it's my adductor magnus longus. So your adductor magnus longus, uh, it, it controls extension, but also flexion of your hip in many ways. To be honest, I'd rather it be my hamstring that was hurt more than anything, but hey, what the fuck are you gonna do? You can't, you can't control it. So um, I've been walking, I've been rolling it out, and luckily I don't need my legs just yet because I had two days off of cardio. So I had those two days off to refresh or, or freshen up, and then we're gonna find out today, this morning, I did all my check-ins, like I said, to see exactly where I'm at so that uh, if I do have to do my cardio, then, then I'll, I'll be good or I'll just adjust it. So uh, let's, get the, let's get this workout in. <sighs> Time to get the money. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome yeah. to another day of body uh, weight bodybuilding. Yeah. My prep is going absolutely incredible and I wanted to come on here to talk about some of the structures and the strategies that I'm using to get to where I am here coming in the next few weeks for the show itself on October 5th, Denver, Colorado. So I'm warming up, doing full rollouts. I roll out my entire body before I train, whether it is upper body or lower body, for several reasons. You do have a lot of soreness everywhere. And if you're under stress in any other areas of your body, it will affect tightness, anything like that. Now, some of these retraction and depression movements right here that you're seeing, I love these because it's really just warming up all the muscles around your scap and getting ready for a load, which is going to be very, very heavy 
wide grip pull-ups for the actual set. Now, this is another warm-up that I'm doing, just simple pullovers on the machine, and notice how I'm extending my hips. I want to involve as much of my body as possible, not just my lats and not just my back, but also my lower back, also my hips, everything, so that I'm prepared for what's coming, and that's gonna be five sets of five wide grip pull-ups, extremely, extremely heavy. Remember, you always need to warm up, always warm up. And there's this big misconception that, oh, I feel fine, so why would I need to warm up? It doesn't make any sense, but no, you need to. And also, with those warm-ups, you need to have perfect form. That's huge, huge, huge. Now, here's the five sets of five. Now, because I've lost a lot of weight, uh, my strength has decreased a tad in certain areas. For instance, my back pulling, instead of doing uh, two 45s and a 25, right now I can only do two 45s for five sets of five, but it did feel pretty amazing. And as you can see, I mean, it, it, it's definitely, it's pushing me to the next limit. I mean, I am the lowest body fat percentage that I've ever been. And to be able to even pull this type of weight and load this much is is really exciting for me, especially because it's five sets of five. 90 second rest between each, feel good. Next super set, first super set of the day. Let's get to it. So the first set was pretty difficult. The first compound set, five sets of five wide grip pull-ups. Remember, I'm going heavy and I'm going a little bit wider with my hands, so it is gonna be a little bit more tough. Now, I never go into super sets for my first set because it is very, very fatiguing on the muscles. So I wanna make sure that I'm prepped for the entire workout. Here, I'm going into six chest supported rows that are heavy, but I'm staying very, very controlled. The technique is on Point. My chest isn't coming up off of the bench too much and I'm right where I need to be. From there, I go without any rest and try this out for yourself, zero, zero rest. But I'm going into a high to low cable pull with a seat. And if you don't have this machine, you can do another a different seated exercise. But notice how I'm retracting and depressing my scaps throughout the whole thing. This is going to help with all the muscles around my scapula. Remember, a lot of training comes down to stabilization. If you're not stabilizing in different areas, you're going to be more prone to injury, which obviously you guys know I've been injured plenty and plenty of times. And look, this is what you get. When you're prepping, you get crazy pumps, you look incredible, and it's ex extremely, extremely exciting. Now look at my chest supported row one last time just so you can really recognize it. My chest is not coming up off of the bench right here. And I'm really, really controlled. And this is actually my last set. So it's extremely, extremely tough. And as you can see, I'm pretty fatigued. And then from behind, you can see kind of how I'm doing here on the third set of these high to low rows. One of my favorite exercises. And then I even put my feet up there just to bring some variation in and and get a little bit more grounded with the movement. Now from there, I went into three sets of eight seated neutral rows, three-way row machine into six lat pull-downs heavy. And notice here, I'm actually keeping my my shoulders in a way not retracting and depressed as much, like my scaps. And I'm going into these lat pull-downs, but I'm not leaning back as much. And there's reasons for this. I don't want to. I want to focus a little bit more on my lats and pulling down and I did just that, and the weight was absolutely incredible. Remember, these rest periods in between each superset are going to be about 90 seconds. 90 seconds. You don't want to go too much above that. So I'm rowing and rowing and rowing and finishing these off strong. Three sets. I'm feeling really, really good, to be honest. Um, I haven't felt this good in, in a while. And it's really going to show on stage. When I step on stage and see exactly where I'm at, um, the no rest, the, the, the proper progression, the food, the nutrition, the way I'm training, how intense I'm training every single time. And as you can see, this is actually my, my final set. I actually think we, I did four sets. I can't remember three or four sets, but you can see how hard this is. Uh, the reason why I'm not retracting to depressing is because I don't want to specific reasons. And look at me, I'm just absolutely exhausted. And this is the level that you need to get to if you want to train and get to that next level with your body and your physique. I'm going to be going into some lat, strict straight arm pull downs. And then I'm going to be supersetting that with some inverted rows, but some arrow inverted rows. 
Coming to a warm up, weight charm. It's the way I like to incorporate body weight training with my weights. It's fun. Now, if you remember at the beginning of my workout, I did some pullovers just like this, but a little bit lighter. I really, really, really want to work these lats and get as wide as possible because when you are on stage as a men's physique competitor, that's what it's all about. It's about the taper. It's about how wide can you be up top to how thin and how skinny can you be at your waist. And the wider your lats are, the wider your shoulders appear, the better you'll feel. So I'm doing eight lat pullovers to six arrow inverted rows, as you can see right here. And look at where my feet are. You can always bend your knees a little bit more, bend them a little bit less, extend them. Uh, there's so many different ways and unique ways that you can be doing it. Now, with these pullovers, you can have the same uh, differences in your training, the variations. Sometimes you can have uh, the contraction a little bit quicker on the eccentric and then a slower concentric or whatever, it's up to you. Now with these rows, you'll see my hips. They're extremely, extremely high. I'm keeping them high. This is actually the last set. This is an extremely tough, tough exercise when you're supersetting it with something of high resistance. And because this is a high volume back day, it really, really put me in a spot where exhaustion was right in front of me and confronted me. Now after all of this, we're going into some biceps because you do want to train your biceps, make sure there's a little bit of endurance there so that your back, when you're training your back, it doesn't shoot out uh, from under you. So what I'm doing here is a simple superset, 15 rope curls on the machine, very good technique, into six to eight cable curls on the easy bar. Notice how I'm staying very, very specific with my technique but it's also high intensity, no rest in between. I'm just going and getting it. This is the final set right here. You can see it takes a lot. You gotta keep rolling, you gotta keep pushing. This is what it's all about. This is where you really build the size. And, and to finish off my workout, I have 25 minutes of aggressive cardio. My coach wanted me, by the way, I work with a coach on uh, just my cardio, my macros. All my workouts are me, but with my macros and cardio, since I hurt my adductor magnus, I can't really bike. And I was doing five minutes as hard as possible, and then 20 minutes as hard as possible on stage. So now what I'm doing is, he actually hasn't sent me my check-in info, which tells me what my cardio is gonna be, and also my macros. So I didn't eat too much for my workout, and then, I'm out about 20 minutes, and it's gonna be close to 500 calories in 20 minutes, as hard as I can go. And then I'm actually gonna hit it even harder here in the last five minutes, probably 19 or 20 speed. So I'm gonna tell him and update him that yo, I went and I did my own cardio. I didn't get a check-in just yet. And my adductor, Feels pretty good. I still feel it. It's just a little aggravation, not too much. But that's why I'm leaning so much on the stair stepper forward. More contraction on my quads and stress on my quads. So, 25 minutes, as hard as I can go. It's simple. To get super lean, to get to where you want to be, I'm not talking about like everybody else on stage. I mean, the best conditioning on stage takes a lot. It's a lot of work and consistency. If you don't have that discipline, you're just failing yourself. If you're failing your overall outcome. Think about it like this. If you go and build a business, do you want that business to succeed in all departments? Or do you just want it to succeed in two out of the five departments? Your life is one massive department. Actually, you have multiple departments under the department. If you don't show up to all of them, teach and take the next step and work your ass off, you're going to get what you probably don't want to get. And that is disappointment. That is not enough. So think about it. When you're on a stair step or when you're doing anything, instead of just taking the day off because you think that you're injured, find ways to train outside of that injury. Find ways to 
push through it. There's a difference between a true injury and like a tweak. A tweak you can work through in many ways. I don't suggest all the time, but definitely sometimes. But all in all, to summarize, you just gotta want it. Right now I'm at 540 calories, 22 minutes in, 180 floors climb, 154 steps per minute. That's about 20 speed. I want it. Simple. Let's go eat. So I get a question a lot. Yo, yo, B Myers, what are you eating post-workout? What are some ideas that are pretty efficient and effective? So number one, uh, you, you need to make sure you're getting your, your proper carbohydrates. And I generally go with something more fibrous, something that I know will absorb into my system pretty quickly, for instance, zucchini, and multiple, multiple vegetables. So that's first things first. Second, I highly suggest you get an air fryer. Tell your parents, whoever it is, get an air fryer. You literally put this on for like 15 minutes and sucks out all the water from all of your veggies and you get your true, true numbers, your macros for your food. And I, I absolutely love this thing. I'm doing it all the time. For me, because I'm 150 carbs, 50 fat, and 250 protein, I'm going with zucchini. I'm also, I actually bought a bunch of stuff over here. I have peppers. I'm gonna eat probably two peppers I'm gonna put on here as well. I run into yellow pepper. And then I have ground yak, which is a little bit of fat and a, a really great, great source of protein, a wild meat. I like to eat game meats. And then I'm gonna have it on a piece of, is this cabbage? Is this cabbage? It's definitely not kale. So. It's definitely not kale. So yeah, and that'll be my meal. And so I also like, actually this is, I just went to the grocery store. I bought a couple things. Remember I told you this morning about the La Pendes Flores? I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but it sounds good. And then I also have some onions, white onions. Really brings a great taste. Also got some taco sauce. I'm not quite sure when I'm ever gonna be able to use this, but I buy it in hopes that one day I will. Uh, and then, yeah, I got a new Broha hot sauce. I'm actually gonna try it today. I'm gonna see with this meal. Basically, my goal is to have about, I want about 50 grams of protein. I want eight grams of fat to 10 grams of fat. And then my carbs, because I'm 150 for the entire day, I want to have about 40 carbs for myself. So it's anywhere around there. And uh, some other examples that, that I can give you for, for eating is, let's see. Mm, let's stay out of that cabinet. Rice is one of those great, sources of carbohydrates you can get that, that that's pretty good for you after your workouts but i do suggest something with a lot more micronutrients broccoli broccoli is a great source carrots you can also get celery celery is actually good at all times honestly um and, and any any leaner meats after your workouts I, d I definitely do suggest that and if you can stay away from things that are unhealthy, you gotta think about it. You just train. So what is your body doing? It's trying to absorb everything that you put in your body, like times 10. So if you put nasty shit, artificial sweeteners, all this different crap in your system right after your workout, what do you think is gonna happen? It's not good for your body, it's not good for your hormones. So my suggestion is to eat a lot of vegetables. Like 50 grams of vegetables is a lot. Like there's a lot of peppers, a lot of onions, a lot of uh, zucchini, a lot of Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts is another great source, another great source. I do suggest as a protein, maybe shrimp, or you could even do some scallops. Scallops is a little bit more expensive, so maybe shrimp is good for you. Uh, definitely to add into your diet. Also bison. Um, lamb is super, super fatty, so I don't suggest that right after your workout, later on in the day, definitely, but yeah. That's pretty much it. You can also do ground turkey, ground chicken is really, really tasty. Again, I try and stay away from chicken, but it does taste very, very good. And if you can get a good source, high-end source, then obviously it'll benefit you times 10. Um, another thing that I, that I like to have as just like a snack throughout the day is the protein cookie butter. Also the greens, I always have the greens. But the protein cookie butter, this is from my buddy. I, I've mentioned it before, it's delicious. Go get it on Amazon. Um, yeah, just type in protein cookie, cookie butter and powder and 
be good to go. The macros on it are amazing. One gram of fat, five grams of carbs, and eight grams of protein for 16 serving size, 16 gram of serving size of weight. So uh, pretty damn good amount. And all you do is you put some water on there and then you're good to go. So yeah, anyways, uh, that's gonna be the video. Thanks for tuning in. I am drinking about two gallons of water today. I'm hitting it hard and I'm gonna be resting a lot today. Uh, I have a lot of work, but at the same time, I get to rest. I get to enjoy my prep, my time in prep. And uh, it's really important that you're getting your rest in. My hamstring or my adductor longus, magnus longus, felt pretty good throughout that all cardio, 25 minutes. As you can see, it was, it was really, really tough, but I made it happen and, and that's what it's all about. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, you get your cre creatine, your greens, or your probiotics, all linked in the description. And then also our our podcast every Tuesday and Friday, Create You Experience, link in the description. Super excited for what's coming. Big, big things. Vegas is coming on the 12th. <sighs> See you next time. Peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, coming in. Yeah, flex.